Paul Johnson. When they were when they were uh, going for Paul Johnson, I was like anybody but Paul Johnson. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, so. All right, I think the guys back there have got everything fixed up. Okay. So welcome back to third and twenty one. Looks like we had a little uh, technical difficulties with the uh, with the crew back there, but I think everything's back in. So we were talking on five things. Ryan was. Uh, Going into the second answer of the first question of the perfect time to start a game. If you're building Ryan Saturday around a Georgia football game. And let me ask you this, yeah. since we got a little yeah. bit extra time. Um, home, if you could have it at your home, like your mm -hmm. physical home, mm -hmm. or at the game. It would be, let me, let me take you through my day, and in, in doing that I'll answer your question. I would go to... Uh, either either the grit or to Mayflower and get just a traditional Georgia breakfast. I would go to, I would walk through the arches. I would walk downtown, just see the amazing downtown college and broad and all that. I would walk under the arches and just breathe in that air of North Campus that yes. nothing else smells like. I would uh, uh, go down and tailgate with some friends and just just fellowship all day long, stay relaxed, maybe watch some other games and stuff. The game would kick off about seven or eight o'clock, just with that. Just, it could be a blackout game, could be a could be a normal, I mean, that doesn't matter. As, as I was saying before, the best game I've ever seen at Sanford was that first blackout game against Auburn. Yes, it's the that. loudest, yes. it is the loudest it by cool. far, by cool. far the loudest I've ever heard that place. Auburn did not have a, Prayer. We had so much momentum. It, it, it was like it was like when the Falcons played the Saints right after the hurricane. Yes. We didn't have a prayer. Right. It was the same thing. They had no prayer. Um, so so that's probably coloring my answer. And then after that, I would have a hotel room uh, just so I didn't have to drive home, and I would go downtown not for not for long, maybe an hour or two, because um, I haven't done that in a while after a game. That that would be my perfect day, and I'd have it with my wife. Nice, nice. Okay, so listen, again, you're not answering for the athletic department, but just yourself. And I'm going to okay. ask you a two-part question. Okay. One is your personal biggest rival that Georgia plays, mm. and describe them in one word or three sentences. Wow. And Georgia's hard because yeah. Georgia has a yeah. number of... Well, it's like Donnan said, you know, you don't think Tech's a big rival because they only beat us about once every 20 years. You don't think it's a big rival. We try, try losing to them. They get but, pretty loud. But, you know, especially some of the older fans, some of the guys that were around early on, I'd say probably say Tech. I, for a long time, um, for a long time, I would have said uh, Tennessee was right up there. I don't feel that way right now. Um, uh, Auburn, the same thing. We've got a lot of family ties to Auburn, but, but I think we're nine out of the last 11 or, or something like that. So we're doing okay there. Um, I, honestly, in part, uh, it's a loser answer and a loser mentality, be, but because we've been drummed so long by Florida, um, and I think that they don't even, because of that, the younger, the older generation gets it. I mean, I think we're still 20 games ahead in the all-time uh, category. It's not, it's not close, but the younger fans, they truly don't even see us as a rival, and that drives me crazy. It's not a good it's not a good thing that it does. It's total ego, but it does. So I would have to say Florida. And and what I'd say about Florida is consistency. That's the word I would use. They are consistently good. They consistently not get the breaks, but...